Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, it's your boy Delmo Damuto, we back with another video today, we are watching Sacred Sand, What If Goku Was In My Hero Academia, Season 2, Part 3, we're gonna watch Part 3 and Part 4, pretty short, like 10, 11 minutes long, so, uh, my man said we ain't got no time to waste, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, shout out to, uh, Sacred Sand, and, uh, let's get into it. What if Goku was in My Hero Academia? In the last video, we covered the events of the My Hero Academia Heroes Rising movie. However, in this video, we are heading back to the canon events of the series. And this episode takes place after part one of season two of this What If series. Hatsume has told Goku that she has designed multiple hero seats for him to try on. And Goku walks to the room which Hatsume seems to never leave. And once he arrives and knocks on the door, there's a huge explosion which blasts the door open and as Hatsume is about to land on Goku in a very embarrassing way, Goku dodges out of the way. Hatsume then brushes herself off, saying that she has built a changing room inside which has the outfits inside of it, so he can try them on and show her. She is excited to receive his thoughts. Goku is excited as well, so he goes into the changing room, and after a short time passes, he walks out in an outfit very reminiscent to Midoriya's, however it is orange and blue. Hatsume asks Goku what he nah. thinks, but Goku says even though he likes it, he feels too much like Midoriya in it, so he says he'll go try the next one on. Goku hey, goes back no. into the changing room, now coming out in an outfit with white gloves and boots, a blue cape, and an orange and black base Neither design. Like... <laughs> Hatsume asks Goku what he thinks about this one, and Super Goku shame, says he man. actually really likes this outfit. The only issue is, the cape could easily be used against him in combat if someone grabs onto it. And if he shoots an energy blast, the wind could blow the cape into it, which would then destroy the cape. There are still a couple more outfits, so he'll just go try them on. Goku returns to the changing room, coming out in an outfit with a full black and orange colour scheme. Okay. Yet again, Goku really likes this outfit, and really has nothing bad to say about this one. But the last outfit he has to try on just felt like it would fit him more, so he decides he'll try that one on first, and then make his decision. Goku goes back into the changing room, and then coming out with the final yeah, outfit sure. and that's the you, outfit blue, black and orange colour scheme. That's you, that's you. Goku tells Hatsume that he thinks he will keep this one. He just feels like it fits him more than any of the others, and plus, it is really comfortable. Hatsume says that's a great choice, and she'll keep the other seats in storage as backups in case he wrecks this suit like the last one. Goku thanks her before getting back into his school uniform, and then looking at the clock. Realising he is late, so he quickly opens the window to the room and flies out of it. He was meant to meet up with Midoriya, Todoroki and Bakugo, as they were all going to go and do their work study with Endeavor's agency. Goku lands in the Endeavor, city, okay. next to Midoriya, Todoroki and Bakugo, apologising for being late and asking where Endeavor is. Endeavor then tells Goku that he is right behind him, and Goku turns in a panic, apologising as he didn't see him on the way in. The four students then begin to follow Endeavor, but as Endeavor begins to fly toward the villain before the shockwave is even heard, Goku is right alongside him. He sensed all the commotion in that direction and acted upon that. Endeavor scoffs, speeding up, and Goku is slowly falling behind Endeavor as Endeavor takes care of the glass manipulating villain and Hawks arrives after it is all said and done. Hawks then gives Endeavor a book about the Meta Liberation Army. Making sure to repeatedly tell Endeavor Hawks to, be to check evil. the highlighted sections of the so book. Bad, and while Endeavor he's thinks a, something is definitely up with Hawks, he isn't the only one. Goku has increased his energy sensing abilities, and when he focuses really hard, he can sense fluctuations in someone's energy. And the energy inside of Hawks is fluctuating like crazy. Goku decides not to mention this, seeing the serious look on Endeavor's face, and assuming Endeavor has noticed something is up as well. Hawks then flies off. And we now head to where they arrive at Endeavor's hero agency. Goku, Midoriya and Bakugo are introduced to all of Endeavor's sidekicks, while Todoroki already knows all of them. But while this happens, Endeavor is in his office and is beginning to read through the book Hawks gave him. Endeavor then finds a pattern in the highlighted areas, decoding Hawks message about the Meta Liberation Army being the enemy, and the fact they have over 100,000 members. Not only this, but he also decodes that in four months, the Meta Liberation Army will strike. Endeavor then steps out of his office, saying he will watch over the four students himself, and they head to a training room. 
and Dither having them all explain their reasons for wanting to join his agency for their work studies, and what they want to improve upon. The other three students give the same answers as Canon, while Goku explains that ever since his battle with Overhaul, he has been struggling to activate that same transformation he used. He has been able to do it a couple times since then, but even still, he couldn't maintain it for long for some reason. It's like his energy was unstable, just like his emotions were when using it. Endeavor takes in everything that has been said to him, and they all then head off to the city. Endeavor flawlessly saving civilians, and taking down villains, while the students watch in awe. Todoroki realises how Endeavor is propelling his speed, and Endeavor gives Todoroki and Bakugo the same task. They need to learn how to store up their power, then condense it, and fire it. They need to be able to release their maximum output in one flash, or with focused precision. Endeavor then gives Midori the task of continuing to work on his Air Force shot, until it becomes second nature to him, and to forget about the new power for now. First, he needs to be able to do two things at once without concentration, mm. then after that, add something else. No matter how strong a power he may have, its foundation is built on steady accumulation of skills. And finally, he gets onto Goku's goal. Endeavor tells Goku that he needs to be able to control his emotions perfectly. He has seen firsthand and been told by others that when Goku is angry, he unleashes the power which is unrivaled even by himself and All Might. The only issue is, he has trouble containing and controlling that rage. Goku needs to be able to become enraged at an instant, but then mm. be able to harness that rage and not let it consume him as that is exactly what happened during Goku's battle with the villain known as Overhaul. Once Goku has achieved this, he will need to make sure none of that overwhelming power leaks out of him while he is in those transformed states. Endeavor has heard that Goku has done that with his weaker transformed state, so he can maintain it with relatively low stamina drain, but once he is able to activate that stronger transformation at will, he will need to be able to do the same thing with that transformation, but to an even greater extent. Okay. Goku takes this all to heart, and agrees with Endeavor completely. But while Goku is taking in everything he has been told, Endeavor's eyes dart to a small, insect-sized robot, which he has noticed has been watching them. And with a tiny fireball, which he shoots at the robot, it is destroyed. Endeavor thinks that this may be related to what he decoded from the book Hawks gave him, but Endeavor would be completely wrong. Inside of a lab, Dr. Ujiko is looking at a large monitor when the screen cuts to static. Dr. Ujiko damning Endeavor's perceptiveness, but it doesn't matter. He's got what he needed for now. Dr. Ujiko then walks to a purple test tube, and after putting a code into a keypad, the tube opens, and a man walks out. Dr. Ujiko welcomes the man, asking how the new body feels, and it all for one smirks. Boy, looking in a mirror, and seeing that Dr. Ujiko followed through, he entirely replicated that student's body, and now his consciousness is split between this vessel and his main body in prison. But unlike when Shigaraki was a vessel in canon, this body had no previous personality or consciousness, meaning All for One has full control. Dr. Ujiko asked All for One what their next move is. All for One saying that Dr. Ujiko needs to give him all the intel he has on Goku, so he can learn to control this new body, and all its tremendous power. After that, he will go in search of powerful quirks to steal. He already had the most powerful quirks from his main body transferred to this one, but he would like some other strong quirks to use just as a precaution. From that, he will also get great exercise in fighting strong quirk users, so he can gain a great and control oh, over the power of the niggas, bro. And once he has both a powerful set of quirks, oh, and right. a great we control over the original ass, power man. of his body, they will first target the two strongest heroes, as to demonstrate his power, and coincidentally, the two strongest heroes are already with each other. Goku and Endeavor. And maybe he'll kill that one fool Bratazuku Midoriya as well, as he uncovered that secret while in confinement. But before all of that, All For One tells Dr. Ijiko to fetch him his suit. And this is where we're going to end off My Hero Academia. In Part today's four. video, we're going to be doing <coughs> our very own What Ifs episode of My Villain Academia, covering events surrounding one villain in particular. But before we get into all of that, I'm going to be going over some stuff which has transpired after the last video ended. Since the events of the last video have transpired, 
all for one with a cloned body of Goku as a vessel, has now begun his hunt for powerful quirks, which he'll be able to use to take on the likes of Endeavor and mainly Goku. While Goku, using the words of Endeavor, has been able to tap into Super Saiyan at will, and has begun his attempt to master the form like how he mastered Akari. Right, but with Super it. Saiyan, it seems to be much more difficult, due to it having both a larger strain on the he should literally be the strongest man alive into the room. Interrupted, he senses still has a drop of sweat roll down Goku's face. Alright. Literally be the strongest man alive right now. That energy he senses still has a drop of sweat roll down Goku's face. Endeavor then walks into the room, interrupting Goku's meditation, and Goku struggles to remain in Super Saiyan as he loses focus for a moment. And Goku then asks Endeavor, what's going on? Endeavor tells Goku to prepare himself as they're about to go on an important mission which goes outside the borders of Japan. Okay. And even though Goku is worried about leaving Japan, when the man with that malicious energy is roaming around, he knows that this mission must be important if they have to leave Japan for it. So Goku tells Endeavor that he is ready to go. We now head to All For One. He has just defeated another one of the many powerful quirk users in his conquest to gain powerful quirks. And this person happened to have a teleportation quirk adding another useful ability to his arsenal, but he still wants to gain more. All for One has been building a set of quirks to use alongside this new vessel of his in order to defeat Goku, and All for One believes that he is on the verge of completing that goal. All for One uses his new teleportation quirk to teleport back to Dr. Ujiko's lab, and he asks Dr. Ujiko if he has located his next target. Dr. Ujiko is saying that of course he has, as on a monitor, he shows All For One a small island off the coast of Japan, where a park ranger is unsuspectingly doing his daily patrol. All For One has an evil smirk, telling Dr. Ujiko that he will be back shortly, as he disappears from Dr. Ujiko's sight. On a small island, a park ranger with what the name the Lapis hell? of the 17th Park Ranger Division is currently doing his daily the patrol, 17th. making sure all of the animals are safe, but then he gets a strange shiver down his spine. Lapis turns around, <coughs> a shocked expression on his face, as he sees a menacing looking man, but for some reason, they look familiar. It then clicks with Lapis. He remembers seeing this guy on the news. He fought alongside All Might. Lapis says that it's an honour to meet him, then asking what someone of his status is doing on a small island like this, but Lapis then has a terrified expression on his face, as he sees a ball of energy appear in the man's hand, and as All For One then fires a ball of energy at Lapis, Lapis then creates a barrier around himself, blocking the blast, but he then gets sent flying back into a mountain while inside his barrier. The barrier then fades, all for one slowly walking towards Lapis, as he says that his quirk is very good for defending against attacks too powerful to counter normally. He will be taking that quirk off of them now. All for one then outstretches his hand, then doing a pulling motion towards himself, and Lapis is sent flying towards all for one, and as all for one is about to grab Lapis's face, Lapis creates a bunch of miniature barriers in its hand and fires them towards All For One. Okay. All For One having to stop his grasp on Lapis to smack away these miniature barriers, but some of them do manage to hit All For One. However, All For One isn't even moved by them. All For One smirks, saying that it seems Lapis's quirk can be used for more than just defense. He's excited to see the extent of his quirk. Lapis begins to run away, hiding behind a tree as he thinks to himself that this guy's a monster. There's no way he can survive. And All For One then speaks to Lapis inside of his own mind, telling Lapis that he is correct. And All For One then appears in front of Lapis, smacking him through multiple trees. Lapis knows that he isn't going to be able to run away, so he might as well just try to fight back. So Lapis then covers his hands in miniature barriers, and he rushes towards All For One, attempting to strike All For One with his okay. barrier covered punches. And while All For One is dodging and parrying Lapis' attacks, he is focused on Lapis' movements, studying them. All For One then kicks Lapis away, then outstretching his hand and lifting Lapis into the air before slamming him into the ground and as All For One then powers up a ball of energy in each hand and is about to fire them at Lapis, Lapis then creates a barrier around All For One just as he fires his attack, meaning All For One's attack hits the inside of the barrier and Lapis sees a huge explosion from where All For One was standing. The smoke fades alongside the barrier, out. and All For One is seen laying on the ground, oh, yeah. oh, okay. seemingly unconscious, and Lapis slowly walks towards him, thinking that he is lucky he pulled that off in the last second, or he would have been done for. Lapis stands over the body of All For One, thinking to himself that he guess if he should call the police now, 
but you should put a barrier around this guy first, so he can't escape. But as he outstretches his hand to create a barrier around All for One, in an instant, All for One is gripping mm. the back of Lapis's throat, grasping it tightly as he begins to smugly laugh. He faked his injury to his own attack in order to test Lapis's intelligence. Did Lapis really think he couldn't handle the brunt of his own attack? And did Lapis think that he didn't already have another defensive quirk in his <sighs> position? Lapis is unable to respond, Damn. however, as he is losing the ability to breathe, and all for one strips his yeah, quirk away from brutal, him. Man. Lapis then laying on the ground and holding his throat in pain as he begins to breathe heavily. You gotta do my nigga eight, all for one looks like down that. at Lapis, saying that if he is being honest, he didn't even use his full arsenal of quirks against him. Nor did he even use his full strength with the quirks he displayed, or with his regular strength and energy attacks. Lapis was just a sacrificial pawn in his long game of chess. However, he will at least <coughs> give him the dignity of dying along with the rest of his beloved creatures. All for one then flies up into the sky, looking down at the small island and creating a small orb of energy in his hand. All for one then flicking the ball of energy down towards the island. Lapis finally looking up and seeing the orb approaching, so out of sheer desperation, he raises his arms into the air in order to create a barrier to defend the island. But to Lapis's complete shock, nothing happens. That nonsense that monster was spouting must have been true somehow. Your shit. He really did take his quirk. Yep. And this realization is the last thing on Lapis's mind before himself, <laughs> along with the entire island yeah, he's standing on, like that. is blown into oblivion. All for one then appears back in Dr. Ujiku's lab. Dr. Ujiku complimenting All for One, saying that his efficiency was outstanding as per usual. And All for One says that of course it was. With this new vessel and set of quirks he's been collecting, he's become unstoppable. There's only a few more quirks he needs to collect before he will then go after his only possible threat, which is Goku. And he will also kill Endeavor to show off his dominating power by killing the new number one Damn. hero. Speaking of Goku, all for one demands that Dr. Ujiko tells him where Goku is and how his power has been progressing, and Dr. Ujiko first responds to the latter demand. Dr. Ujiko tells All for one about Goku being able to tap into that golden hair transformation at will now, and how he is seemingly attempting to lessen the strain of the form for maintaining it over as long a period of time as possible. Well, as for his current location, he isn't entirely sure. It seems he went on a world heroes mission of sorts. Goku, Izuku Midoriya, Katsuki Bakugo and Shoto Todoroki have went on a mission along with Endeavor and other pro heroes on a mission which goes outside the borders of Japan. But as to where they may have gone, he doesn't have the slightest idea. All for one is angered, saying that Dr. Ijigo had better figure it out. It would be rather unfortunate if he ended up dead before All for One even battles against Goku and Endeavor. A drop of sweat rolls down Dr. Ijigo's face, saying he will get to work on it now, and All for One smirks saying very good, as he then says that he will go after his next victim tomorrow, before teleporting away. And Dr. Ujiko gives a sigh of relief. Dr. Ujiko then quickly gets to work on trying to find Goku's location, as he does not want to be on the wrong end of all for one subtle threat to his life. Hey, but while bitch. he does this, Dr. Ujiko thinks to himself that all for one has been acting different ever since he's been in this new vessel. It's like the biology of this vessel has altered his mind in some way. He seems more blatantly aggressive, and he seems to consider the thrill of a fight just as important as his main goal. At that Goku, at that Goku, he will have to look into this after he finds Goku's location. But with this thought on Dr. Ujiko's mind, we are going to end off this Man, My Villain it. Academia We're gonna part. watch the finale. Hopefully, got the we gotta watch the finale. Okay, but now they have finally returned to Japan and are back in Endeavor's Hero Agency building. Now Goku is back in Japan, he can focus on that malicious energy he sensed before, so Goku begins to go into deep meditation while in the training room. Goku is trying to lock onto the energy he felt before, as he knows he needs to figure out what is going on before anything terrible happens. Goku is on the cusp of locking onto the energy, but then Goku hears the door to the room open, ruining his concentration, and Goku opens his eyes, so seeing the last Momo part, as Momo runs up to Goku and hugs part. him, asking how he has been. Video. Goku is confused, wondering what Momo is doing here, but Momo then says that she just wanted to see him. They haven't got the chance to see each other in person for a while, so she decided that she would come and see how he is doing. Goku says that he's really happy to see her, and as Goku is about to hug Momo, Goku senses danger, and he quickly wraps himself around Momo, shouting for her to get down as the building around them explodes. 
Goku and Momo then open their eyes. Goku letting go of Momo as he see the ruins of the building around them, and the dead bodies of Endeavor's sidekicks. Goku and Momo get worried about their friends being dead as well, but then they spot a giant dome of ice, and as it melts, they see Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, okay, Todoroki. and Endeavor standing there. Todoroki panting, and Endeavor diligently looking around. Goku and Momo run over to them. Goku asking Endeavor if he knows what happened, and Endeavor says no, but he then glares into the sky, and says but he assumes that man has something to do with it. Goku looks up, seeing the outline of a figure, but as Goku looks closely, the outline looks kind of familiar to his own. All for one then teleports in front of the group, greeting them, and then saying that he is surprised that they all survived. He knew Goku would, but not the rest. Everyone not looks in shock, rest. as someone who looks just like Goku is standing directly in front of them, and Goku asks who they really are. All for one telling them who he really is, and saying that he is here to take out the only person who could ever defeat him now. Though he doubts that Goku could even touch him with the power he's acquired. Goku tells the others to stand back, cracking his neck and knuckles, and saying that he will deal with this pose for himself. Endeavor then telling Goku to not be so arrogant, but Goku looks to Endeavor, saying that if this guy is even remotely close to the same power as himself, then Endeavor stands no chance. That isn't being arrogant, it is just telling the Tell truth. Him the and besides, if he needs help, then he is free to jump in, but only if he needs help. Endeavor scoffs, wanting to argue, but knowing Goku is correct. So with that, Goku decides to make the first move, okay, rushing Goku. towards All for One and punching him directly in the face. However, All for One isn't even moved, and All for One then grabs Goku's arm before punching him in the gut and kicking him back. Goku smiles at this, thinking that he will finally have a challenge after so long, and Goku transforms into Super Saiyan, thinking to himself that he knows All for One will have multiple quirks. He just needs to bait him into using them so he can figure out what they are and how to counter them. He can tell by the impact of his punch that All for One has the shock absorption quirk, but he has no clue how many quirks he has in his disposal. <coughs> Goku tells Momo to create the thing. Momo nodding as she creates a red pole and she throws it to Goku. Right. Goku catching it and then throwing it directly towards All for One. All for One dodging out of the way, but then the pole extends, digging itself into the ground, and after that, Goku flies towards All for One, attempting to kick him in the face, but All for One dodges his kick as well. However, this was a part of Goku's plan, as he lands on the pole before bouncing back towards All for One at twice the speed, and landing a devastating blow to All for One's spine. All for One actually feeling this blow as he is slightly pushed back. All for One then begins to smile as well, thinking that he might actually be able to enjoy this battle as he turns around, but as he is about to begin his assault on Goku, Endeavor has had enough of standing around, and shoots a ball of fire at All for One. All for One then creating a clone, which then shoots a ball of Ew. water directly at Endeavor's fire, cancelling it out. Copy the picture? All for the One fuck? then says that since Endeavor wants to get involved, he can fight his clone instead. The clone then grinning, as the clone then rushes towards Endeavor and the rest of the group, while the real All for One rushes towards Goku, and him and Goku begin to clash fists. Goku is surprised that All for One hasn't even transformed, and is keeping up with him in terms of strength. But All for One simply remarks that a simple strength quirk can really make all the difference. All for One then punches Goku in the jaw, pushing Goku back, and Goku then quickly well, pulls up the Kamehameha, firing it at All for One, and All for One maniacally laughs teleporting behind Goku, and he's about to hit Goku with an energy blast in the back. But Goku expected this. The direction of Goku's Kamehameha then changing, as it kills directly to All for One, and hits him into the ground. Goku then flies into the I air, getting ready it. for All for One's next attack, but then, a bubble of water appears around Goku's head, and Goku struggles to hold his breath, as All for One steps out of a crater in the ground, and is in a Akari. All for One laughs, seeing that he knew fighting the real owner of this body would help him to unlock its true power, though he knows he is just touching the surface. All for One then electrifies a bubble of water, as Goku screams, and the bubble of water then disappears, as Goku begins to fall to the <coughs> ground. All for One then flying in, as he is about to hit Goku with a barrier covered punch, but Goku then bursts his aura, and All for One is pushed back. Goku is hovering in the air, and he tells All for One that he wasn't going all out against him, but now, he will get serious. Get all for serious, One saying dude. that Goku is bluffing, but then, Goku speed blitzes All for One, punching him in the stomach, and knocking the wind out of him, before Goku then uppercuts All for One, and then Goku shoots a ball of ki into the air, which he redirects to slam All for One into the ground. 
Goku then flies towards All for One once again, ready to land another flurry of blows, but as Goku is about to punch All for One, All for One makes a barrier around himself, blocking Goku's punch, and the barrier then fades, with All for One rushing in and kneeing Goku in the face, before kicking him into the sky. Damn. Goku is confused. How did All for One just get stronger? And when Goku looks at All for One, he seems completely uninjured. All for One smirks, looking at his hands, as he's glad he stole a regeneration quirk, as even a shock absorption wasn't enough to handle the strength of those blows. Goku is irritated that he didn't catch on sooner, and All for One notices Goku's power slightly spike when this happened, intriguing All for One as he wishes to test something out. All for One rushes towards Goku once again, Goku doing the same, and he begins to brutally beat down All for One. But All for One is laughing the entire time. Goku keeps punching and punching, until he punches All for One into the ground, creating a small crater, and he fires a Kamehameha at All for One once again. But this time, it isn't effective. All for One is able to smack the Kamehameha away, wow. and he laughs, his pupils first returning to normal, before All for One is then coated in a golden aura, and becoming Damn. a Super Saiyan. Not only has All for One been getting unintentional Zenkai boosts throughout this fight, but he is now using the same form as Goku. And with this, All for One decides that it is time Goku gets a bit of his own medicine. It is now All for One who speed blitzes Goku, well, Goku using Goku got this, as his personal punching bag before throwing Goku into the ground, and All for One then begins to power up a Kamehameha of his own. However, this one is coated in electric water, giving it extra power. And Goku knows he won't be able to avoid this attack, so he'll just have to try and counter it. Goku powering up the third Kamehameha of this fight, and the two then fire their beams at each other. All for One's beam easily overtaking Goku's, and Goku is stuck holding back All for One's beam with his <coughs> bare hands. Goku is using all his energy to hold back the attack, but eventually, Goku has no more power to hold it back, so the beam explodes on Goku. Goku being heavily injured and reverted to his like base that, form. But... <laughs> Goku lays on the ground, barely being able to move as he turns his head and sees all his friends bloodied and beaten just like he is. Goku can sense all of their energies and they are all fading fast. The only one still standing is Momo, but that's just because the clone of All for One saved her for last. The clone All for One then grabs Momo by the back of the neck and the real All for One forces Goku to not turn away from what is about to happen. Momo stares at Goku with tears in her eyes saying that she loves him. Every yeah, moment she's spent time, with Goku the to be about has that. been the best moments of her life. She is always smiling when she's around him. She always wishes Goku to be happy, even if it means she isn't. She never thought she deserved Goku. Even now, she still doesn't believe she does. But Goku just makes her feel a way that nobody else ever has. Tears continue to pour out of her eyes as she says that she just wants to be there for Goku. She wants to be the shoulder he can cry on, and she wants to make him happy the way he has done for her. My most final words to Goku are, I could never live without you, as Clone All for One stops her from saying any more, as he crushes Momo's throat, and she dies. Damn. No resurrection this time. All for One says that he did Goku a favour. She was never going to stop talking at that rate. He's sure she had so much more left to say, but unfortunately, Damn, Goku, he just had happen? to cut her off. All for one, along with his clone, begin to laugh. Goku's expression being one of pure shock as tears flow down his face, like his eyes are waterfalls. All for one slowly walks to his clone, saying that he has done well, but as he continues to walk towards his clone, he stops, as it feels like the entire planet is shaking. All for one turns around, seeing Goku standing up as he pictures every single moment he spent with Momo inside of his mind. Goku then looks to Deku, Bakugo, and Todoroki, thinking that if he fails, then his friends will die as well. And with all the pain and anger coursing through Goku's body, he finally snaps. Goku's hair begins to spike up, turning golden, but this isn't a mere Super Saiyan anymore. Goku's pupils fade, and a blue and golden aura surrounds him. Goku is now using his pain and rage to achieve a new level of power. Goku then blitzes all for one's clone, killing her with a single attack, rage? and then Goku kicks all for one away. <laughs> Goku then rushing towards Super all for one, rage. and now the two have an intense battle, with both Bye, of them putting Trump all of their side. power into their attacks. All for one creating barriers to block Goku's punches, but Goku then punches through all of the barriers, and sends all for one flying. Goku then dashing in the direction of all for one, with one fist outstretched, 
and Geeky uses an attack called the Dragon Fist and punches straight through All For One. And before All For One gets a chance to heal and become even stronger, Goku shouts that this is for Momo as a ball of energy appears in each of his hands as he pushes them into each other. As he shouts, Final Flash! And a yellow beam fires Final directly flash. towards All For One, completely eviscerating every atom of the villain. Goku then reverts to his base form, running over to his friends in Endeavor who are on the ground. By this time, all of them have passed away, other than Deku, who is barely passed clinging away. to life. God damn. Goku tells Deku to stay still. He'll fly him to a hospital, but Deku looks at Goku, smiling, as he says it's too late for him. But Goku can still achieve his dream. Goku is confused, as Deku outstretches his bloodied hand, and Goku holds it with his own. Deku saying that Goku is now the vessel of one for all, and he tells Goku that he can be happy. It may take a bit of time, but one day, Goku will be at peace, and Deku hopes by then, Goku will be the number one hero. Deku has a cheerish grin while having tears in his eyes, but then his eyes finally close as Deku dies. Goku beginning to cry once again is, is now, not only Damn, has he lost the person Shaker. he loved the most, he has also lost his best friend. Goku screams in pain, then flying into the air, and a long distance away, Shigaraki was watching everything that happened. He didn't intervene, due to Dr. Ujiko instructing him not to, as if all for one wouldn't have been able to win this fight, Shigaraki wouldn't have been able to change the outcome. Luckily, all for one had a backup plan just in case this situation took place, and now, he is going to need Shigaraki's help to put it into motion. Japan would now be in a different place than it was before, its number one hero having to be replaced once again, as Endeavor was killed by All For One's clone. And even though a lot of the populace believe Goku should become the new number one hero, since he has proven multiple times that he is the strongest hero, Goku is still just a kid, so it is decided that Hawks, the previous number two, will become the temporary number one hero. And speaking of Goku, he hasn't been seen by the public since the day of his battle with All For One. He hasn't been seen in school, or in any public place. Goku has been taking some time to think about everything, visiting Momo and Azuki's. I ain't gonna lie, this the see Goku thought he uh, and on Dragon Ball Z he was like if he can just stay off Earth, then he'll just keep all the problems away. Nigga, you need to stay off this fucking Earth, <laughs> this Earth. Nigga. At least, at least, at least your Earth had niggas like Gohan, Vegeta, and shit running around Piccolo and shit. These, these niggas ain't got that. <laughs> All Might, well, you strong, but, I mean, you strong as hell. All Might, he's strong, but he ain't your level. Endeavor ain't your level. <laughs> this world is better without every you. day, as he thinks about what he could have done differently. If only he didn't hold back against All For One at the beginning. Maybe then, they would both still be alive. The only person who has even seen Goku during this time is All Might. In one of the times All Might was visiting Azuku's grave. And that is where Goku told All Might that he is now the world of one for all. And he confides in All Might about every way he has been feeling. The main body of All for One is sitting in a prison cell, realising that the biology of that kid's body affected his mind. The idea which he is currently having Dr. Ujiko execute it will be different though. He is sure of it. All for One then hears through the speakers in his cell that he has a visitor. All for One awaiting the arrival of his former rival All Might. But when the door opens, All For One is pleasantly surprised, as Goku is the one to walk into the room. Okay. But this is where we're going to end off this part. Be Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this season, and yeah. if you did, then make sure to like, comment, and please do subscribe. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Damn it, how we end the season two on a cliffhanger like that? Okay. This was a fire chat. I wasn't expecting to watch all three parts season two but fuck it you know it was, the first two parts were like 10 minutes and then it was like shit 15 so it was like whatever fuck you so that's season two we're gonna watch season three of course uh this is five shout out to shaker sand make sure y'all like comment subscribe check out the last chapters right here check out goku in dc what if goku was in dc universe right here you know and uh and i'll catch y'all next time man peace